When you make the halal difficult for the children, the shaitan comes with a better way to make the haram a little more beautified for them. And all of a sudden they go down that path. If that your child came to you straight and told you, Baba, Mama, listen, there's someone that I really care about. I want you to meet them. And before you even meet them, you dismiss them. Wallahi, we need to fear Allah. Parents, build a safer environment for your children with more rapport that they can come talk to you. That your child came to you straight and told you, Baba, Mama, listen, there's someone that I really care about. I want you to meet them. And before you even meet them, you dismiss them. Wallahi, we need to fear Allah. It's so crazy that we have Zionists occupying the land. But subhanAllah, the jahiliyyah has occupied our minds and our hearts. You know that you're going to leave this earth. Then why be an oppressor in this earth? Why are you oppressing your children and not allowing them to marry easily? Wallahi. <laughs> إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم we begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى we praise him we thank him for everything he's provided for us and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own soul, our evils from our own intentions. And we remind ourselves that whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to be guided, there's none who can be misguided. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to be led astray, there's none who can guide. And I testify and bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final Messenger of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمُنَ اتَّقَ اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِ وَلَا تُمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Oh, you have believed, all of us. Have consciousness of Allah, be mindful of Allah, be woke to the idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching everything that we do. Be woke to the idea that we will indeed meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a day which is unavoidable. And we are reminded to not die in any other condition but the submission to Allah. What does that mean? That means we have to die in sujood? No. It means that we die in a condition that's pleasing to Allah, in the condition of Al-Islam. And that is the way we're supposed to live our lives and pass away. My dear, beloved, respected elders, my brothers and sisters of HVICC, Wallahi, you have no idea how much of an honor it is for me to be here. True story, seven years ago, just about seven years ago, I got my first start in speaking in this little gathering over here, mashallah wide-eyed person, just excited to give value to the community. This place holds special to me because I remember seeing this. I was new to Islam at the time. I was new to, I, I was just like, wow, they have a basketball court, mashallah. There must be so many youth over here. We played some basketball. It was so much fun, mashallah. And now today I have the honor of delivering a khutbah to you all. Wallahi, I'm so fortunate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought me from the depths of places that don't even find fit to mention in the house of Allah. Brought someone who is not even worthy to stand in front of you. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala felt it. The need to raise me and elevate me to stand in front of you. Wallahi, I don't take this for granted at all. This might be the highest I ever achieve in my life. So I promise that I'm going to do my best to speak to you and really help you take away a message from here. This memoir is a amana from Allah. Whoever stands over here, that means the organization have found fit that, listen, this person can deliver something. We believe that this person is the right person for the job. I would be doing a disservice to you all if I held my tongue back. I would be. I want to tell you something right now. It comes from a place of love. Believe me, it is. This khutbah is going to be delivered in two parts. The first part is going to be directed directly at the parents. Don't worry, children, you can listen to. The second part will be directly directed to, parents, uh, to the children. And parents, you're going to benefit from that as well too. 
Here's the message, and I'll explain to you in just a second where did this idea even come from. Parents, make it easy for your child to get married. Make it easy for them. Do not make the halal difficult. Because if you made the halal difficult, the shaitan's going to come and make the haram so much more easier. This comes from the inception of a sister who DM'd me on Instagram. And the DM was very, very disturbing. You see, this sister, she lives in Palestine right now. She was born and raised over here in the United States. Her family found it fit to take her back to Palestine. That's their choice. Over there, she's going to university, the same university that her family picked for her. But she met a brother over there. And this brother, she feels like, has the right deen, the ikhlaq, the, the, the rightful manners, that it's right to come and introduce him to the household. But I think you know where the story is going. You see, they come from a, a higher-end culture or family. They come from a place near Ramallah, about five minutes away from the city, called Deir, Deir Daban. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. But you see, the boy's family, they come from a village within Ramallah, which isn't that good. You see, the boy could have slid into her DMs, but he didn't. The sister could have sent him her, his, her, her, her snap code so they can say things and completely disappear, but she didn't. Instead, she did the noble and honorable thing, which was what? Tell her parents. Wallahi, in this day and age, you're lucky if your children come and talk to you about these things. Did you know that? Did you know that it's easier when you make the kitab so difficult, you make sliding into someone's DM so much more easier. Wallahi, you do. When you make a nikah, something so blessed, simple and easy, when you make that difficult, oh, you make sending a little bit of pictures and Snapchat much more easier. You see, you don't understand what you're doing, parents. When you make the halal difficult for the children, the shaitan comes with a better way to make the haram a little more beautified for them. And all of a sudden, they go down that path. What was the reason they were rejecting this boy? Why? Because of his family. Oh, we're upper middle class? They're barely middle class overall. We're not going to do it at all. What did the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teach us? He taught us that if there's a good proposal that comes to you for your child, accept it. If you're happy with his deen, his akhlaq, or her deen, her akhlaq, if you're happy with it, accept it. Why? Because if you don't, there'll be facade and fitna, turmoil on this earth. You see what's so interesting? I've been to Palestine, by the way, alhamdulillah, beautiful place. Wallahi, you get there, they make you feel at home. They just immediately, they make you feel at home, subhanAllah. It's so crazy that we have Zionists occupying the land. But subhanAllah, the jahiliyyah has occupied our minds and our hearts. We have people occupying our lands, but the dunya has occupied our minds and our hearts. More than fearing Allah. And by the way, this isn't a common story for Palestinians. And I don't want you to think that, you know, Brother Esther, you're picking up on Palestinians. No, no, no. This happens in my culture too. If you're from Pakistan and, you know, someone comes to you from, you know, maybe Islamabad for a proposal, but there are people that you want to marry, they come from maybe a place in Karachi or Faisalabad or Lahore, you might be like, oh, I'm not really sure. Islamabad is a city. I'm not really sure how they're going to be. Maybe they can't fit into my family. Yet you negate the fact that your child came to you straight. Not to the back door, not inviting people to the window, not doing things that are haram because they fear Allah and they respect you. Do you not trust that your children can find a very good spouse for themselves? Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out and allow that to happen, but you have to understand when you're sending them to the universities, to the schools, there's only so much lowering of gaze that can happen. There's going to be a time where someone catches someone's eye. And you have a choice to make. Living in this century, forget about how your parents did it. Forget about it. Forget about how you were raised. Forget about that. Raise your child in today's time. Today's difficulties are different than the difficulties back then. But guess what? You as a parent have so much, mashallah, knowledge to share with your children. You have so much to give back to them that you can help them in this journey. You can help them. Isn't there something to be proud of? That your child came to you? straight and told you, Baba, Mama, listen, there's someone that I really care about. I want you to meet them. And before you even meet them, you dismiss them. Wallahi, we need to fear Allah.
What did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teach us? To marry someone, there's some categories. You can marry them for their beauty, you can marry them for their lineage, for their wealth, or you can marry them for their character, their deen, their ikhlaq. Out of all of these fours, the best one is the ikhlaq. Why? Beauty goes away. Beauty goes away. You see, your lineage, something can happen and all of a sudden this lineage is no good anymore. Money, it can go away as well too. But ikhlaq, character, deen, it just evolves. It gets more beautiful, mashallah. But I get it. You're worried about your children. I get it. I understand, right? You want them to be better off. Why? Because you remember the struggles that you had. You remember how difficult it was. You don't want your innocent child to be going through that as well. But can I, and I ask you, wasn't it Allah who provided for you and your wife at that time? Wasn't it Allah who provided for you? Isn't it Allah who gave you everything that you have right now? So what if they start off in the reds? What if they start off a little bit lower? Well, with the help of Allah, with your du'as as the parents, don't you think your du'as can impact their marriage? Yes, it can. With your blessings, do you not think that there can be barakah in their wedding? Yes, it can. Instead of getting so lavish and spending so much money on your marriages, why don't you just follow the sunnah? Do it simple. Give that money to them so they can put maybe a down payment on a house, maybe. Or take, take the spouse on to an umrah trip or a hajj trip, mashallah. Imagine that as a honeymoon. Imagine giving your children the tools to be successful, the privileges needed so they can have a step ahead of you because you never had that. What amazing parents you are, wallahi. What amazing, uh, you know, this entire masjid comes from the inception of who? For what? For why? For the children. Isn't it true? The reason you're thinking about expanding, the reason you're thinking about making this into a school, the basketball, why? So your children could come over here. You know that this is your legacy. You know that you're gonna leave this earth. Then why be an oppressor in this earth? Why are you oppressing your children and not allowing them to marry easily? Wallahi. Well, hey, don't you trust your children can pick the right people for themselves? Don't you believe that your children have, you've given them the ability, the talent, you've given them the right amount of guidance, you've raised them, mashallah, nicely, that if your daughter came home and she told you about someone, don't you think that, wow, I've raised my daughter, she's, she, she reads the Quran, she's been to the school, she's been everything. I know that she wouldn't just pick some regular dude. Let me entertain it. Let's get the mother involved. Let's get them involved. Let's figure this out for them to see. And guess what? You sit down with the boy's family. You sit down with the girl's family and you evaluate honestly and earnestly. Not dismissive because they're from a different side. Oh, we come from South Yemen. Oh, they're from the village in North Yemen. Wallahi, when they drop bombs on us, they don't care where you're from. They drop it on Muslim mean, period. When you get stopped at the airport, they don't care you're from Ramallah. They don't care if you're from Deir Daban or wherever you're from. They don't care from Karachi, Pakistan, wherever. They're going to stop you because we're Muslims. And yet we are oppressing each other. Wallahi, we've become the oppressors. We are the oppressors on the land, no one else. We're stopping ourselves from being successful by oppressing our own people. Who? Our own children. Let's not oppress them. Let's not oppress them. Let's entertain what they have to say. Let's listen to them what they have to say. And let's be just. Let's be just in our dealings. Let's be just when it comes to us either rejecting a proposal or accepting a proposal. When you're bringing a proposal, think about them. Talk to, talk to your daughter, talk to your son. Ask them what do they think about it. Don't make this a, you know, a, 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 a totalitarian sort of, uh, I say it is, so it is. You're marrying them because I say it is. Who's paying for the wedding? Me. So I get to dictate who I want for you. Habibi, you're not marrying them. They are. You're going to leave this earth very, very soon, one day. And they're going to have to live with them. But you want your child to be with someone with the Range Rover. I get it. I get it. You don't care if your daughter's going to be crying in that Range Rover. But the fact that he has what is important to you. I get it. These dunya things are important to us. But I promise you, if you look for the right person that has Quran, if someone comes to you with the nice ikhlaq, you should give your daughter to them. Give your son to them. Why? Because they're going to improve their lives. They're going to improve the children's lives. And that's how the ummah starts getting more resolved and getting better as well too. The second part of the khutbah, we're going to talk about the responsibilities of the children to how they can talk to the parents as well too so we could all live in a little bit more harmony. I know. Okay. 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 Okay.
In the first part of the khutbah, we talked about making the halal easier for your children. In the first khutbah, we talked about the responsibilities of the parents upon their children. Your children are in amana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you on the day of judgment of how you spoke to your children. How you treated them, how you interacted with them, what you did for them. Be nice to them, be just to them. The second part is about the children. First and foremost, if you have met someone, first and foremost, fear Allah and do nothing more before you talk to your parents. Do you know how many people at council who have heartbreaks? Why? Because their parents said no. Well, you had put all your eggs in one basket. You did every single thing with this person. And now your parents are saying no and you are heartbroken. You don't know what to do with yourself. Wallahi, that's not how we're supposed to be. If you see signs of infatuation, you're interested in someone. Maybe you did some investigation. You found out, okay, they are single. Come talk to your mom about this. Come talk to your dad about this. Parents, build a safer environment for your children with more rapport that they could come talk to you. Because you see what happens is this, if they can't talk to you about this, they're gonna talk to their friend. Now their friend may be a Muslim, may not be a Muslim, but if they're a non-Muslim friend, they're just gonna be like, yo man, forget your parents, bro. Just get their snap, just get the snap code. Just talk to them in the DMs. Just do something else, bro, here's this item. Take this, no one has to know. No one has to find out. That's the type of advice that non-Muslims give to Muslims. And sometimes a non-practicing Muslim might even give the same type of advice to other people too. The reason I'm sharing this with children is that if you want, if you truly, sincerely, and earnestly want the best for your family, the best for your children, the best for your parents, just remember something. Come to your parents in the correct way. Prove to your parents that you are able to make the right decisions. You're able to make the positive decisions. How? By showing your character. You're praying five times a day. Your mom doesn't have to tell you to get up and pray Salah. You're not waking up at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. You're not ready for marriage. If you're waking up at 11, 12, 1, you're not ready to get married. Relax yourself. Your parents still have to tell you to take out the garbage. You're not an old man yet. You're not even ready. Your mom's still washing your boxers, bro. You ain't ready. So don't come to your parents all correct thinking that you're this person. Now that you hit a little teenage airs, you want to come to your parents. Stay in your lane and relax yourself. Prove to your parents you're a good decision maker. How? By being responsible. By praying your five daily salah with them. Instead, you should be the one waking them up for fudge. Show them how responsible of a person you are. When you go somewhere, you text your parents immediately. You call them immediately. Listen, Baba Mama, I've arrived safely. Look at that, maturity. So when that person comes to their parents with a nice little proposal, they're gonna believe that, wow, okay, my child is a very responsible child. They're not just gonna bring some amibukwas person, some regular person who doesn't even like. I know that their choice is, let me entertain them. Let's bring their family in. Let's have a conversation with them. The reason I'm sharing this with parents and with children is because the number one thing we have to remember is our legacy. They sent your brother SQ all the way from the Bronx. Well, like, I don't, I don't deserve to be here. Once upon a time, my head was in a toilet, a toilet, vomiting things that I shouldn't have been drinking in the first place, doing things, signs of jahiliyyah that I shouldn't even have in the first place. Your brother was sent over here based off of legacy. You would have seen amongst you, there have been these pamphlets that were dropped off. This is our legacy. In the Bronx, we have a huge Muslim community, but I'll be honest with you, we don't have much space anymore to pray. We're not as blessed or fortunate as you guys over here. Today, there are three Salat al Jum'ahs at the masjids in the Bronx, three, okay? The first one that's gonna be held, people will be praying in the snow. I want you to keep that in mind. You guys are so fortunate and blessed and lucky to have such a beautiful place. Wallahi, in the Bronx, it's not like that. You see the pamphlets that you would have received by now? It's a pamphlet that shows if you would like to read the project, don't even donate, it's okay. Believe me, this is gonna get built with or without your help. So the good news is you can participate if you want. But the bad news is that whether you participate or not, Allah is going to make sure this building, this house gets built. And this will be the largest, listen to what I'm saying, it will be the largest masjid in the entire Bronx. It's the biggest. Right now in our halakha circle with the youth, we have about 40 children who come. Why? It can only be 40 because we don't have enough space. Imagine more space, imagine more youth. We counsel children who are hooked on pornography, but this new place will have a counseling center. We talk to children who are hooked on drugs. This place will have a counseling center. 
We have reverts coming into the mushroom. We don't have, we have programs for them, but we don't have a section for them. We need more space. We need your help. This is our legacy. So I just want to show you that this is what it's going to look like. You see these people who are praying over here in the, in the summertime, it's nice because the sun is on you. It feels good. But in the wintertime, when this weather outside, we're all outside. This is how we look like even in the wintertime. So I just want you guys to be mindful of this. I don't want you to donate because you feel bad for us, because I don't want you to feel bad for us. I don't want your pity. We don't need your pity. The Bronx has been fine all along, but you have an opportunity right now to help another community of yours that needs some help too. So if you would like to help the community, there's a red box. All the proceeds go straight to the masjid, okay? There's another box that goes straight to me. You could put money from me in that box, inshallah, right? But the masjid's box are the red ones. The pamphlets that you have, you can either put up your, you could go through Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, Zelle, however you want. And we've given you all the options, okay? But you all have these pamphlets. If you don't have one, we'll get you one as well. In this pamphlet, it tells you how you can pay. You can set up a, a fund that goes out from your account all the time or a one-time payment. If you don't want any of this, you just want to charge a one-time payment to a card, we got that too. But give whatever you can. Believe me, give whatever you can with the right intention. That's all we need. We don't need a generous amount. We need the right intention. Because see, a dollar with baraka will go a very long way. A dollar given with stinginess Oh, go, it'll help. But your du'as, your, the, the, the barakah is in your du'as. So please, give whatever you can. Give whatever you absolutely can. And if you can't give anything right now, take it home. Give to someone who might. And if you still can't do that, your du'as will make this project come true and happen much, much quicker. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our households. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our children to be married and have righteous partners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to not, do not, please, Allah protect us from oppressing our own children. Allah protect the children from oppressing the parents. Allah allow the parents and the children to live in harmony within their homes. Allah allow our massages to be filled with the youth. Allah allow our massages to have the legacy that we need. Allow us to give da'wah to spread Islam from the corners of the earth, Ya Allah. Allow your message to be successful, Allah. Allow us to be the instruments to allow your, uh, your religion to spread on this earth. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina May Allah accept from us, forgive us, guide us all. Wa alaikum as-salam.